Hello everyone, this is going to be my first YouTube video that I've ever posted. I figured I need to start doing these things uh, just to help others who have DC solar trailers. And uh, anyway, today we're going to talk about the uh, battery current uh, shunt uh, sensor. That's a shunt, it's behind this little device right here. And I'm going to show you how to uh, calibrate this thing and get it set up because it does actually make a big difference when the sunny island is charging. So if you look over here on my midnight controller, if I can get that, you can see that there's a good 36 amps, 35 amps coming in. It's important for the sunny island to be able to track how much amperage is getting pushed to the batteries so that it can properly track the state of charge. So I'm gonna walk you through that process and I'll give you a detailed walkthrough on this. Uh, hopefully I do okay. Okay, for starters, we need to find out if your sunny island even has the shunt or the battery current sensor set up. So hopefully I can get this to where you can see this. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the down arrow until we get to the menus, and then we're gonna go down to settings, uh, and then enter, go down to battery, uh, Oops. External, no, I'm sorry, battery. There we go. Uh, that's menu number 220. And then we go into battery settings and then you go down to number 225, which is the current sensor. And hopefully you can see that there. Uh, why is this so painful? Okay, there we go, current sensor. So now if you uh, hit the down or you enter, it says battery current sensor type is none. So that's not good, we need to set that up. Now in order to set it up, we're gonna have to actually turn off the sunny island, well not turn it off, but go into standby mode and also go into installer mode. Because if I hit enter right now to try to change this setting, it's gonna say stop the device to change this sensor type. So we're gonna escape all the way out now to the main menu, make sure the sunny island is shut off and now we'll go try to change that. We go back into settings, battery settings, which is number 220. And then oh, I wish you could see this a little better. And then we're gonna go down to 225, current sensor type, enter. And then if you hit enter on this none, it's now going to allow me to change it. There's 60 millivolts and there's 50 millivolts, and then it cycles back to none. According to the SMA rep that I spoke with, uh, most all of the Sunny Island trailers actually have a 50 millivolt sensor or shunt. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and say okay to confirm. And then if you hit down arrow, it now says what you wanna put in your battery current gain. Um, other videos I've seen out online just say, oh, just use the default here, but the the rep at Sunny Island actually had me, or at uh, SMA had me change that to 500. I will have to do a little more research to find out what that 500 actually means. Could mean the capacity of the battery, and if that's the case, it would be 540. And then, since there's two in parallel, I would even think it would be more than that, but this only allows you to go up to 1,000 millivolts. So I'm not, uh, I'll have to do a little bit more homework on that, but for right now, go to 500, enter, confirm, yes. And there we go. Now we want to calibrate, which is the next menu item, which is number four. But in order to do that, we actually have to do a little bit of work on this guy. So I will pause the video and open this panel up and show you what we need to do inside there so that we can properly calibrate. Okay, I've removed the little cover and if you're lucky enough, your trailer will have one of these little cover plates that just come off. If not, it's kind of a hassle, but you gotta take out these four screws, which can be really problematic since it's over on, the, wait, it's, yeah, over on this side. You gotta like, uh, it's anyway, it's just a hassle working around the door. But anyway, there's the shunt inside. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the black wire off and connect it over onto the red wire side. And we basically want to short them out so that when it calibrates, it can properly determine 
uh, I guess the resistance or impedance of the uh, of the line. So I'll do that now. All right, so you can see here, I'm just in here unscrewing this. And now before we take these wires off, it's actually a good idea to come over here to the sunny island and shut off the power. In fact, I probably should have done that before I opened up the, the thing. To shut off the power to the sunny island, you come in here. Now, some people just come up and slam all those down. It's not actually good. What we want to do is we want to go in a proper order. So while the sunny or while the midnight controller is turned on, we want to remove the power because if you even feel these, you can tell it's warm. There's a lot of power coming through here. These midnight controllers can adapt to a change in amperage a little better if it's turned on and powered. So while it's turned on, I will kill the first breaker. You'll see that that's going to drop the amperage down, and now I will turn off the second one, and that's going to drop the amperage down so that it's completely low and there's nothing coming in. In fact, you can hear the fan shut off now. Now that there's no power, it's safe to go ahead and turn off the midnight charge controller. Now you can see it's powered down. Okay, now that you want to do the exact opposite when turning it on, and I'll walk you through that process here shortly. Okay, so getting these little wires off can be a little problematic. And so what I found, what works nice, is you reach down below, you just kind of put a little tension up so that this has got a slack here. And now I can just kind of feed that off of the plug. Now notice that the red wire is on the inside and the black wire is on the outside. It's important to pay attention to that because it is polarity based. We need to make sure to put the right wires back in the right order when we put it back together. Okay, so now I've removed this, uh, the little red wire and black wire, and now what we're going to do is twist them together and then put them back on to this inside where the red wire originally was. This is required to do this for it to properly calibrate. So to save a little time, I'm just going to, I straighten the two hooks out on the wire. Now I'm going to feed it in underneath this side, and then I'm going to tighten it down. Because this is just temporary, I don't necessarily need to do a little loop hook on it. You just need to make sure that both wires are securely fitted against that screw. Okay, so you can see here, I just uh, straightened them out, got them underneath that washer, tightened it down so that they're both connected on that uh, inside of the shunt. And then um, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so now I'm over here on the Master Sunny Island. It's currently turned off because it says right here to start, inverter, press enter, press and hold enter, which we're not gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and hit down arrow. We're gonna go down to settings, uh, which is number 200. And then we're gonna come in, go down to battery settings, which is number 220. And then we will go down to 225, which is the battery current sensor. Okay, so now from my earlier setting, you can see here that it's 50 millivolt, which is what we want. Hopefully I can get that so you can see it. Uh, then we're gonna go down, there's the 500 millivolt. Now we're gonna come in here and we're going to start the calibration. Now, when you do the calibration, you want to have the midnight controller turned off because you don't wanna have any energy going over the shunt because that's part of what this process does is it helps the Sunny Island know how much energy there is there. So we're gonna hit enter. Uh, oh, looks like I have to go into the magic installer mode here, boys and girls, so here we go. Uh, I have to come back out. I'll just come all the way back out so you can see it from the top. Uh, you come down to settings, then we go all the way to the bottom to password setting, which is number 280, hit enter. Now this thing comes up and it gives you like a couple numbers. That's the actual runtime of the inverter. So mine is 27,000 hours, 725, or 27,725 hours. So you add them up, two plus seven plus seven plus two plus five. So that's gonna be nine, 16, plus another two is 18, plus five is 23. So I'm gonna come here and enter 23 
on the password. Enter. And now when I did that, you're gonna, you'll barely see on this side over here, the level went from a zero to a one. And that one indicates that I'm now in installer mode that gives me more capability. Now listen, if you ever go into installer mode, please be really careful because you can actually mess up your equipment. You want to know what you're changing. And I actually recommend you have a little log book that you keep track of what date and what feature you changed it from and to so that you always have a way to look back and see what you did on what day. And uh, it's definitely worth it. All right, so let's now escape back out to the main menu, hit down arrow to settings, go into settings, go down to battery, into battery, uh, come down to 225 again, which is the current sensor. Go in there, the sensor type is 50 millivolt, and it's 500 amp, which is what we want, or I'm assuming that amps amps. Then we come down to number four, which is now going to be the battery current auto cal. So I'm gonna hit enter, hit the down, and when you hit enter right now, this little cursor right here will start blinking. That tells you that you can now modify this state. Now, if you hit the down arrow, I have start. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start, okay, and it is done. Pretty simple for as much work as it takes to get there. Now, when I hit up arrow, let's see, I gotta find the setting, which I'll show you here shortly. Uh, I'll pause. Okay, before we show you the sensor to actually tell you that you did it right, I wanna point back to the, to the shunt here. I'm now going to disconnect the red and the uh, black wire and hook them back up the way they were, which was red on the inside, black on the outside. Okay, now I've replaced the wires with the red on the inside, black on the outside, Push the wire back down. Now I'm gonna put the cover back on that little cover plate. I thought I'd just show you uh, me tightening these uh, screws down. I did not have a screwdriver tip that was gonna fit this. So uh, I'm using an Allen wrench. So just wanted people to know that an Allen wrench is an option if you don't have a screwdriver tip. In fact, I almost think the Allen wrench works pretty good. You just, that first, uh, that first, uh, just to get the, the, the bolt moving a little bit, takes a little bit of extra torque, but once it's moving, it's good, so. And there you have it, I put the plate back on. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how we know we got it right. So if you come over here to the sunny island, and we hit the down arrow to meters, which is 100, and then go, man, I wish I knew if that was working, but all right, anyway, I know all the other videos have, I need to pick the right time of day to do these videos in the future. <laughs> anyway, then we go down to number 120, which is battery meters. Go ahead and go into battery meters, and then scroll down, that's battery state of charge, which is currently 80%. That gives you the battery voltage, battery charge, and then let's see, time remaining, float, and voila, number six. Number six says total battery current. Now, I never really understood what that meant before, but I'm gonna show you how that number is gonna be magical here in a moment. So now that we've properly calibrated the shunt, we're gonna turn back on our midnight charge controller. Now, if you remember, I told you there's this proper order to do this. First thing we wanna do is turn on the number five, which is gonna turn on the midnight charge controller. We wanna give it a few minutes to boot up, just kinda of let it get kind of into its process because when we flip these other two breakers, there's a substantial amount of energy or current built up in there. And if you turn it on willy nilly and not really pay much attention, uh, you can send a zap of electricity or voltage so or amp so high that it can actually cause the uh, midnight charge controller to blow out some transistors that then require you to have to take the midnight controller out of your trailer and send it back to uh, midnight solar for them to repair it. I've had to do that on a number of uh, charge controllers and I must say I'm very impressed with midnight. They do a very nice job and I love that they 
warranty those. All right, so it, it's up, it's booted. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on. And I don't do it all at once. I kind of do one, give it a second. You can hear some clicks in there. You can see that the amperage is starting to come in. Voltage is increasing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the second one. And you can see that voltage is coming on here. Now let's wait till it kind of stabilizes. It looks like we've got 121 volts coming in with 34 amps-ish in that range in the bottom right hand corner and check this out if we come over to the sunny island hopefully you can see this this is the meters battery total battery current sensor which is number six you can see there that it says 34 point whatever amps so by doing the calibration of this shunt here it now allows the sunny island to know how much energy is getting passed through to the batteries and I want you to also notice that the sunny island is turned on, but it's not even inverting right now. It's just uh, um, in standby mode, and yet it can still read the amount of amps that's coming onto the battery from the solar panels from the midnight charge controller. So anyway, that's the reason this matters. Now another little tidbit: I had the reason I stumbled onto this. I saw this video once before on another trailer, and I just didn't think much of it. I just thought, well, that's kind of stupid. Uh, but I tried to hook up a generator to a trailer and uh, as I hooked the generator up, the generator, it, the Sunny Island was never accepting the power from the generator. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And um, the SMA uh, tech had me calibrate the uh, shunt or the battery current sensor and voila, that fixed the midnight charge controller I'm sorry, that fixed the sunny island to be able to properly track the energy coming in from the generator. And that fixed the issue where the uh, sunny island was not latching on to the energy from the generator. So I highly recommend that everybody check their trailers and make sure that the shunts or the battery current sensors are set up and they have been calibrated. This will help the uh, Sunny Island properly charge from solar, and it will also help it to properly uh, charge from a generator as well. I uh, hope this video helps someone out there. I hear everyone else say it. Make sure to like it and subscribe and all that other junk. I don't know if I'm going to get into that big of a following, but I'm sure I'm going to be doing more videos in the future like this. Thanks for your time, everyone.